Let me go through this lecture. I already have a recording on YouTube for about 20 minutes of this lecture. This is our first example. Let me go here to the end of this example. I have already explained this example on my recording. Let me solve a second problem of the same nature. This is volume of production along with production cost associated with those volumes of production and also sales price in order to sell those volume of production. I escape. I double click on this. As you see, it becomes an Excel sheet and the interface also becomes Excel. However, just to make my job a little bit simpler, I copy it and I paste it here. So it's the same data. The first thing it asks me is, what is your total fixed cost? This is my volume of production. This is my total cost. I mark this, control, then I mark this, and I go here, insert, scatter graph, and I select this one. So this is my data. Now it asks me, what is the fixed cost? The fixed cost is a cost that we have it over there, even if we produce nothing. I may look for a line, which I can pass through these points, such that the gaps between that line and these points, which I have, that gap is minimized in the sense of square of the deviation. That is why they call this linear regression line as least square. Is a line which tries to have the minimal square variations from these numbers. The minimal summation of square of the deviations. Having said that, I come here and I type intercept. And here I type slope equal to intercept. And don't forget in Excel, just be friendly with Excel. Type a couple of characters. It will bring up what you need. My Ys are my total cost my x's are my volume of production and it will give me the intercept therefore in this problem my total fixed cost is 19,544 let's go back over there 19,544 then it asks what is your variable cost I can just copy this down this data because it was relative referencing come a little bit down. I fix them over there and I go here and erase intercept and I type slow. As soon as I type SL, slope will come out. I click on it and now I have the slope too. I'll go here and type line equal to intercept, which is where the line cuts y-axis. This is my total cost when I don't have any production plus variable cost and I like it in case if I'm going to copy down multiplied by volume of production and it will give me this line. I can go here, select data, add and it says which one do you want to add? I want to add the line what are the x's? These are the x's. Where are the y's? Here are the y's of the line. And I say OK and OK. That line is over there. The only problem is that it is in dot form. So I go here and I say change data type. For this one, I select line. OK. So now I have the total cost curve. I have fixed cost this was fixed costs which i also show it by f and these are variable costs let 
which we also show it by V. So I'm done with this. I go back to my PowerPoint slides. 196, 19544, 196, 19544. What percentage of the total cost can be estimated based on the volume of production? The tightness of the relationship between X and Y, it is defined by R squared. And R squared, I just come here, equal to R, when I look for R, S, R squared. This here says, what are your Y's? My Y's are total cost. What are your X's? These are my X's. Enter. Therefore, 96.76 or 97% of the changes in total cost can be explained in terms of changes in production. A tight relationship. 96.8% or 97% if you want to remove decimal point. Compute the standard deviation of the total cost estimate. And that is STD dev, or what we call it standard error for regression. And that is equal to STD error between X and Y. These are my Y values. And these are my X values. Enter 1,283. Let's go back 1,283. The next part has for compute the maximal potential sales price. So now I need to compute the relationship between sales price and quantity. Go back to my Excel sheet, make it cost line, and then I just copy these things, copy, and paste it here. Go to the first one. I take this one up over there, which is my production volume, and the next one is price. That's it. Enter. I click on this. This one should also go there. Enter, click on this one, take it back over there, and take it back. And then this one, take it back there, and take it back here. Enter. Let me show it to you how I could have done it in an easier way as long as it goes to Excel implementation. I'll go here. I click on two, that is absolute referencing, and seven, absolute referencing. And I click on two. This one, I entirely make it absolute referencing. Okay? A four. So, for C, it is from two to seven. Two to seven are absolute, but C, I can move it this way or the other way. For A, it is entirely absolute. So no matter which column I go, A still remains A, enter. And then I copy it down. I go here, it, I type slope, slope. I go here, I type R square, R square. And I type here, standard error, standard error, X and Y. So I have those numbers, everything looks fine. The only thing which I don't like, I could have come here. I could have taken these over there and bring it here, which is now very nice. Now I copy this, copy and just paste it here, control V. If I look, now it says intercept between those two, slope of those two, R square of those two, and standard deviation of those two.
over there because I did have no decimal point. R squared came out one, which I was a little bit surprised. Now I have this information too. Therefore, if I'm going to draw the line, I can go here, copy, and I can paste it over there. Now I have this line. These are my dots. Click on them. But now here I want them to be my sales data. They're going there. Then I also click on this, demand line equal to, this is my intercept because I'm going to copy it down, I like it, plus the rate at which my total price comes down, I like it again, multiplied by the quantity that I'm going to sell and then I copy this down, and then I click on this, and I move it from here to there. Everything now looks fine. This is my total cost curve, and this is my demand curve. I have both of them. This point. The intercept is 1732 which it comes down at rate of negative 14. Finally at some point it will intercept the x-axis. That means even if we set the price equal to zero that is the maximum we can sell. And if I want to find that price I know that the equation of my line is 1732 minus 14x and then at this point y is equal to zero so I set this one equal to zero therefore x if I take it to the other side is equal to 1732 divided by 14. So I'll go here, equal to that one divided by 14, not negative 14, which is negative of negative 14, 127. So I think I have the answer to all parts here. Compute the maximum potential sales, that is 1732. Compute the slope of the demand curve, that is negative 14. Compute the maximum potential sales quantity, that is 1372 minus 13.66 Q equal to P equal to zero. One equation, one unknown, and we get 127. Thank you very much for your attention.